Alrighty, as always, let's play this in full. There's no sound. Let's play this again. And... Oh. Alright. You have some notes here as well. So, this is your... It's a facial expression exercise. You need small work, especially on the body. And it's a test. All right, that all makes sense. Uh, let me see here. You got some questions. And one of your questions is video reference. All right. Yeah, I see. <clears throat> so one of your questions is here. If you don't shoot reference, you have problems with body mechanics. If you do it, do it on your own, out of your memory, you make mistakes. So, yeah, I mean, the thing is, it comes down to, uh, you know, like experience in how many times you do things over and over. So there's some aspects um, that won't require reference from you anymore after a while, maybe. I mean, I still use reference. Um, every now and then I do stuff uh, without reference, depending on the style. Um, in this case, I mean, I'm not sure if I would need reference. Um what is a bit stiff to me is just this angle here. There's a weird flat color there. Um, in terms of like, there's so much movement in the body. A, I'd be careful with with sticking a, a wrist there where it's just it feels very IK and it's right at the edge of the screen. I would either bring that arm down so it's cut off maybe here uh, or bring the whole thing higher so you can see the hand. Which technically I wouldn't do just because then you have to animate the hand and the fingers and the contact and everything. Um, but for something that's such a <gasps> such a big look, to me it would almost be you want to rotate, I guess a little bit the hips, depending if he's on a on a on a stool or something that can rotate. But see how that leg is always kind of pointing this way, even through all of this. To me, then it would bring out that leg a bit more, which can bring the hands. But it'll probably bring that elbow in a bit more. It seems like he wants to look this way, but then. This is still pointing that way with that arm. So I would kind of rotate things over a bit more to to have a bigger change and loosen up those arms and loosen up that lower part. Um, if I just go like this, let's pretend it's just that. And I'm putting my hand in front of it here. It works a bit better. Yeah. Now, that would be... You're also talking about finding the right poses in reference, especially when it gets cartoony. It's a tricky thing. Either you have to uh, act it out really cartoony to give you reference, <clears throat> or you just act out your base animation, and then you have to emphasize it on your own. So if you have anything where that reaction is like this, I mean, like you might have done this in the reference. I, I don't know your reference. I only see the animation here. Um, you might want to think about a bigger anticipation you also want to look at, do I want to scrunch my mouth together a bit more, mm, like press those lips to almost get a bit of a, a squash effect in the face as you go back and maybe even go lower with the eyebrows. Do you then want to bring up the shoulders and the head a bit forward so that the head height is maybe here? So you have an overall feeling of squash as you go back. But then I would also look at, if you look at your spacing, how you're, I want to turn this on here how your head goes back i'm exaggerating i'm not sorry i'm not very clean here but you can see if you track the nose the path that you have and i know you say it's still rough but i would watch out for bam like a sudden linear key you can do that of course depending on the style for, for snappiness but sometimes if we do like this then i would drag the head a bit more so maybe you're leading with the body and you have a bigger curve and the head is still like the nose might still be back there for uh, a moment that's more like that and then you snap forward um <clears throat> i was a look at the arcs like your head goes back and like this you might want to do something like that with a bigger settle on an arc and again these are things that you can act it out and then you can you can act it out again really exaggerated almost overacting and then you can look at well what are the differences there what can i pick i mean you mentioned that you want to find poses in your reference and that's kind of what I would do. I would really act it out as crazily as you can. And then maybe a more naturalistic take and see the differences and see where, where you can pick something bigger. In terms of animation too, uh, before I get to your other question. Like that, I don't mind that even though it's a bit like pose wise, you have a nice curve here, but then you got that, that the stiffness of those arms. That to me, it feels like you want to even then re almost relax your pose. 
and then here when he goes huh this feels like a slight concern and then you can maybe raise the shoulders a little bit that would stiffen the arms a bit to give you an overall feeling of nervousness and stiffness and less relaxed and then when you go ah that would then be potentially uh you know even ah no nah, i mean not that we want to do this and it gets it, it gets into your w pose but um you want to maybe lift up that arm and and uh, it depends what you want to do i know what the, what the point is but maybe it's it's something where like oh no what's over there maybe you want to even bring out that arm with with more uh like a tense hand pose again to bring up the craziness the, the tension and kind of give you a different sense of maybe sharper angles and ah versus the beginning that's more round and relaxed and soft so i would look at um what are, what is the state of mind what are the feelings of the character throughout the whole shot and also have posing either through the body or through the fingers potentially if you want to see them um uh, to kind of reflect the tension or or the softness of the character if you don't want to bring up that arm again bringing out um, elbows like this again bringing that elbow probably in a bit more so you have things pointing this way so the body points this way and even that arm bends with that forearm visually feels like everything's kind of pointing this way this just feels a bit broken with this going here and this going here um but let me see your other question your other question is that let's see in the last exercise i've been figuring out that i struggle a lot when i have to animate a motion that is slow my animation always feels floaty and lifeless, but I don't know exactly how to solve it. That's a tricky thing. I totally get what you mean. When you have something like this and you have a very slow... I, I don't mind, actually, your your holds and your ease. And um, To me, it's more like this transition, how you can kind of push that, the take and the cartooniness potentially and the arcs and all that stuff. But I think how you go from into this, how you have that, that moment of, huh? And then with that little moving hold, I think that's just the right amount of moving hold. It doesn't feel like it drifts. Um, but it is tricky because you it's a fine line between floatiness or moving holds. Um, sometimes just less is more when you feel like stuff gets floaty. Uh, of course, it depends on the style. If it's if it's more on the realistic side, you can't really um, not move things. It's a very, you know, you start having breathing potentially or you look at depending on the pose. If it's sitting, you're not going to have a lot of movement in the root, but it, it might just be more looseness in here and probably in the head. Um, I would look at, you know, if someone is is standing you might have more side to side and keep alive in the root uh if someone is leaning over this way and has that arm pointing this way uh, and that's a moving hold uh, and it's more realistic then you're going to have potential potentially more movement in here because that's a that's a less stable part of the body but if it's cartoony you might go in here maybe the focus is on the face so then to me i would hold this fairly steadily with this having the most subtle movement so that it's the only thing that moves and then the audience's eye goes there if a character does this and points this way and the point is important or maybe the character holds something important then to me i would stiffen up everything up until this area where that has a the biggest moving hold and ambient movement so again it's the only thing with movement so that the audience's eye goes there if that is the focus i, know, I hope that makes sense and your next question is well, fairly similar. You say here, another concept that I struggle with a lot on the body mechanics is the main character stop, slow and fast stops. I understand that the main concept behind it is that when it comes with slow stops, it's more like a slow in, while a fast stop, it's more a fast overshoot and settle. But when you try it, the action doesn't feel correct with slow stops feeling floaty. Totally understand that. And with fast stops, it feels like a pop. Yeah, the fast stops, I mean, it's also depending on on the style i don't mind this because the thing is you have a fast stop but it does overshoot and set a little bit and you do have the focus on the head and i like that the head continues this way up with the jaw opening and the body going this way i think that's fairly successful um again it will it also depends on the style if you look at something like uh Bukuyo, when you have extremely one frame pops and and, and expression changes and and movements it's so cute, but it's so stylized. It can totally get away with it. Uh, it all kind of depends on how naturalistic you want your animation to be. But I understand, I understand your your uh, problem. Um, and again, it just comes down to what is the intent? Where do you want it to be uh, focus-wise? Is it, you know, like Hotel T or Cloudy with a chance of meatballs where you can really get into a crazy pop but then the whole animation is always that style it's also about consistency you know what i mean like if you have the beginning of your animation that is fairly softer in nature than uh, than this it's going to break you mean like when you have something a bit more real 
and a bit more complex in terms of keep alive and movement, which you don't have here. I'm just, I'm exaggerating to my point here. When if you have ambient movement and it's a lot more, there's a lot more noise, almost mocap style, then something like this would feel out of place because you're establishing at the beginning of the shot and you're telling the audience, this is the style of my animation. And when you suddenly go into a crazy pop hold, um, that's going to be weird and, and change the style and confuse the audience. But again, I think in your case, you're, you're fairly successful. But I understand the uh, the concerns. And in terms of improving it, um, my thing is always, you have to look at the overall style. What is the style of my animation? And what do I want to tell the audience in terms of this is this is this is the world that this character lives in and this this is the style in terms of movement and then you just have to be consistent that's the biggest thing you don't want to suddenly change things and then to me all the movements and the pops and settles and everything to me is always in service of a the story if you have one or just the emotion and and making it clear what you're showing so sometimes a really snappy pop with a hand or in your case <gasps> like that serves the style and you want to make it ah, like really oh someone is freaking out and i think going in faster will make more sense to to make that emotion clear versus showing it slowly and maybe adding too much overshoot and settle will give this too much uh it's almost over animated and it will take away from the sudden panic potentially so to me it's always what's is it helping the story or is it helping showing the right emotional beat uh of the character and then your last question here is about spacing. So you have a lot of poses. You start noticing noise and some issues and breakdowns, etc. Uh, let's go down here and you want to check the spacing and the process of working on this. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to have to do a uh, later on. I'm still in the middle of of uh, what's the word? So my, in my FNAs explaining blocking and mistakes and things, but I will get to my workflow series as well. But one thing is motion trail. You wanna you wanna track an object and see that you have onion skinning you can put on depending on the new Maya features. You have um, interesting onion skinning with with coloring. Um, I personally do something, and I can show you this in the critique because it's recorded like that. But I use a dry erase marker and and just put dots here to show what's actually happening. Which again you can show like this in this program. Keyframe Pro has onion skinning like this. Uh, but I would do this physically and put dots on this on my screen in one color, and then I would take another color. So basically, I would pick whatever whatever colors you have, and then you can see what's happening here. And I feel like mm, maybe actually I want it to be a bit more like this, and then I would go frame by frame and adjust. Then you know again the nose will go lower, nose will go lower, maybe a bit more to the side down here, and then on this it would be more here and maybe one here. One here, here, and here. This is very even in terms of spacing. And that arc might be way too soft, but or the timing, I mean too soft. But it, it to me it illustrates what I want to do. One color shows what it's actually doing, and then with the other color, I'm drawing what I want it to be, and then I go back in there uh and double check. And that's within my hour. Again, with this program, you can again you can do all kinds of things and it gives you it gives you onion skinning as well, as you can see here. Anyway, that's kind of that. Um, it's more of a, a lecture critique than than a critique, but I think you're fairly successful with what you have. My question to you is going to be, do you want to just go through that with what you have? Um, or do you want to do another pass and then uh, change things? Because it's totally fine just do one exercise and leave it and take what you learn and put that into the next, which you've been doing every now and then. So... Uh, let me know in the email how you want to proceed with this. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, if my ramblings uh, made sense, uh, and if they've been, uh, if they've been help uh, helpful. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. No more rambling. Thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.